Happy three months Nintendo Switch, and instead of a cake, today we're bringing you a top 10 list. What's up everybody, it's Zach from Switch Force, I've got Gabe here, and today we're counting down the 10 best Switch games so far, three months in addition. It's been 90 days of the awesome hybrid, and we're bringing you a list of the 10 games you need to own. Zach. Can you believe that this it's been three months already? Like I Time remember, flies. I remember like it was just yesterday when we were making our first videos uh, about like what the Switch was and the hybrid nature and what games we wanted, what franchises we wanted on here. So and now three months have passed and uh, we got ourselves a decent little library so far. I'm actually kind of happy with it. Yeah, it's crazy because we actually started uh, Switch Force uh, three months before the Switch and now it's been double that time frame, which is just insane uh, but our list today covers a wide range of genres and we feel pretty strong especially uh, as we near the top so let's kick things off with number 10 shovel knight treasure trove this is a fantastic game and, and while it has been on other platforms i feel like it is a great fit for switch and the perfect uh sort of nostalgic retro title to hold you over until virtual console arrives yeah and, and games like this have been like, sort of the lifeblood of the Switch uh, in between the major releases. Yes, we have ARMS and, and uh, Splatoon coming, and later on in the year we have other great major Nintendo things on the horizon. But for now, these smaller indie games that, yes, yeah, sometimes they've been on other platforms, but playing them on the go and being able to play at home as well. Uh, Shovel Knight uh, specifically, it, like, I played it on the plane uh, while mm -hmm. we were uh, going to an event in San, Fran San Francisco, LA. No, it was LA, I forget. But, yeah, I mean, it really helps small bite-sized games that you can like distract yourself that don't like waste up a lot of battery uh shovel knight's great so that, i think this is definitely like one of the best games on there yeah it launched with the system it brought in plague knight and it's a fantastic game all around uh, i think shovel knight kind of goes down as one of like the ultimate indies right it has that quality it has that memorability uh and it's just a really solid title for either on the tv or on the go it does feel like it's like a contemporary classic, sort of. That's kind of how I see it. Like this, it's one of those games that came out and like instantly it had a lot of like, you know, ten out of ten review scores, and and it struck a chord with with people, especially with people that uh, like these uh, more uh, old school games. And you know, the, the gameplay is so tight. The game can be difficult, um, especially uh, you know with the newer stuff. The original release of Shovel Knight was a little bit easy. That was like one of people's complaints, but uh, this is definitely worth your time. Um, it's not a full price game at all, and uh, you get um, a decent package for, for a good price with a Treasure Trove. Plus, they have an amiibo, so it feels right at home on the Switch. At number nine, we have Puyo Puyo Tetris, bringing a puzzler uh, to the Switch library. This is a very full game. There's a lot of content. Obviously, you have Puyo Puyo, you have Tetris, you have the fusion of the two, uh, you have local multiplayer, you have online multiplayer, you have a story mode. It gets a little bit zany uh, in that campaign, but it is perfect puzzle action, and so it, it definitely earns its spot on this list. Yeah, this is one that I didn't get to play as much as I would uh, have liked, but you made a Let's Play for the channel, and, and a lot of people are, like, really into it as well. And uh, the combination of Puyo Puyo and, and Tetris in general, like, at first, like, I was, like, put off by it. I was like, why are they doing this? But, you know, the game is fun from the limited time I have had with it. Um, and, again, just adding, like, a puzzler like this, or, or whatever you want to call it, that, that's a weird term for me, but... Yeah, it, it fits right into the console. Again, portability and the, the, the quick nature of it. You can play a, a couple of rounds or matches, whatever you want to call them, um, and uh, you'll be good. Yeah, and I love the fact that it does incorporate so many different modes of multiplayer. I love that it is a $40 title. Uh, I love that it is a physical title. You know, there's a couple games on here that are retail releases, but a lot of them end up being uh, digital downloads. And like you mentioned, we'll see more cartridges as we continue through the year. But the first three months have been really full of a lot of great downloads, and it's nice to see some cartridges, uh, some retail boxes make their way to our top ten as well. At number eight, we have a Minecraft Switch which is kind of being discussed as the definitive version of Minecraft. It performs really well uh, on the Switch, both portably and docked. It's a little bit stronger when docked, but it has the Mario uh, pack. They are adding things to it, and it feels great just having the nice Switch screen, the Minecraft creativity, and the option for online play. I do want to just specify, I think we mean the, the definitive edition for like consoles or something. Yes, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because PC is very hard to compete with because there's mods and server browsers. You can rent your own server. There's all types of stuff that the Switch obviously can't do. But the Switch version does have the exclusive Nintendo content on here with like uh, the Mario and, and the Mario World or whatever it's called. I'm not a super like 
fan of Minecraft in any way. Um, but, you know, again, Jake did a Let's Play for this one on our channel. And uh, he wasn't super into the game either uh, before. But he, I, it seemed like he had a good time. And uh, it's a good one for the younger audience that are still super into Minecraft. That, that game's been around for a very long time and it's still really popular. So Absolutely. It, yeah. it feels kind of like Shovel Knight where it's just a great game to have uh, in your library. It's a great game to pull out in between some of the bigger releases. Um, and even though it is on plenty of other platforms, it feels right at home on Switch. It feels nice at that $30 price. They are releasing a physical version uh, later this year, but right now it is digital only and continues uh, to climb that mountain of those download releases. And so we feel very comfortable placing this on our list at number eight. At number seven, we have the Jackbox Party Pack 3, which I think is the ultimate definition of party multiplayer, and it's so good on Switch because you can bring that enthusiasm, that excitement, that craziness wherever you are, and that's what makes this such an ideal version of the Party Pack game. I have a ton of fun when we play this together, uh, and and we again for for a lot of these videos we do have individual let's plays you can go check out. But that video specifically, I remember having a blast with. Uh, we get so competitive, the three of us, like just it's in our nature. Um, every, you know, it happens in like you know everyday real life stuff. We played like party pack, you know, with your family at your house. Mm -hmm. Like it's such a, a fun game, and like you said, a perfect like party style environment for like your family. If if you have like a get together going on, you can like bust out the switch, and everybody has phones and you can just like turn it into like a couple hours of like good solid fun with this game i kind of wish this was a, a trilogy of all three party packs i feel like that would jump it even a couple more spots up our list uh but three is a great bundle as well it's got quiplash 2 trivia murder party gespionage tko faking it all of those are really uh inventive and interesting and different you know our i think our group favorite is trivia murder party just because of the chaos at the end there uh, but i've had a lot of fun with all of these faking it especially uh if you're you're, you're close to the people, if it's family members or close friends, really good. And it's interesting because we actually were able to play this um, apart from each other, which which is kind of interesting that you can make that happen because it does use the cell phones. Uh, it is ideal in the same space, though. Um, and you do have Party Pack 4 to look for forward to. Hopefully that will come to Switch as well because this is some of the most fun you can have uh, with your compatriots. At number six, we have Tumble Seed. Possibly the most unique indie game available on Switch. This one you're controlling a seed uh, through a maze-like world with both thumbsticks. And I think it's that unique mechanic that really set this one apart for me. I wish this game had tilt controls. A lot of people wish this game had tilt controls. It's still like a really like inventive little like roguelike. And uh, it's really difficult. <laughs> it can get frustrating. It like. is so hard, especially <laughs> as you progress. Yeah, but yeah, this is another one of those like small little indie gems that that really surprised me. And like I said, I feel like they are the lifeblood of the Switch because they they, they are giving us something to play in between the major releases. Tumble Seed is really really fun. Uh, I think Jake like has done like the best out of the three of us. Yeah. But yeah, this game would be so perfect for Toe Control. I don't know why they're not in there. Well, it's still an awesome showcase of skill. I've seen some of the speed runs and some of the daily challenges, uh, and people just have insane precision. And I like the depth there. It's one of those games that was fun to sort of discover because there are so many seeds. And at first, uh, it seems like, okay, maybe this is just kind of a simple thing, and we're going to go up the mountain and get a high score. But really, it just continues to exponentially expand and grow, and it really is a tough one. I think uh, the toughest thing I have played on Switch, um, and, and we really liked the innovation here um, and the fact that it was something brand new. And that's why Tumble Seed holds the sixth spot instead of something like Binding of Isaac. Plus, the price of Tumble Seed is a whole lot more appealing uh, than Isaac. And it was uh, released on Switch as a new title, which we had to give it extra points for. Yeah, um, Binding of Isaac is still great. We still really like it, but you know, we did want to make sure to uh, spread out the genres. And not that Tumble Seed and Binding of Isaac are very like similar, but they a little bit. Um, so in their roguelike style, uh, in their their procedural nature, yeah, uh, it's. It's definitely one that is going to require some patience and some practice, but it's totally worth it uh, if you do put the time in. At number five, one to Switch. I think this may be the most uh, divisive Switch game out <laughs> there because some people seem to love it and, and say that it is a great uh, expo of the, the Switch's different uh, features, you know, the motion, the HD rumble, uh, sort of the multiplayer, and some people say that it is dumb and they were one and done. I feel like it is still an ideal fit for the Switch library because it does provide more of that 
multiplayer party fun that something like Jackbox Party Pack would, but this specifically takes advantage of the Switch's features. And it's one of the games that really does utilize the entire suite of what the Switch offers in a multitude of ways, and I feel like it earns a lot of uh, respect for doing it in such a, a good way. I kind of fall on, on the other side of the spectrum. I, I To me, this isn't a game that I'm going to play anymore. I played it with you guys at launch, and yes, it was like really fun. We have some some uh like videos of us just being goofy on camera and stuff so i Gotta appreciate those cows yeah i appreciate the game for what it was it's just not something i can keep going back to um but like you said another one that does lend itself to to a party environment and uh it does showcase the the, the switches like technology pretty well so like you said you, you, the, the marble uh, game in particular with the hd rumble you can milk those cows um <laughs> and, and we understand that it, it might not be a game for everyone but I I think it still deserves a spot on the list. Absolutely. I feel like it is quality enough and has a wide enough variety. I mean, think of like Safe Cracker, uh, the the Flags. Uh, There's a lot of really cool games that that may not have the longevity of some of the titles that are awaiting higher up on the list, but I do think it still uh, earns a spot, and I think, you know, it's, it's $50. Should it be a little bit less than that? Probably. Um, but I feel like in spite of... Uh, some of the the controversy around is this really a great option or not i feel like because it does highlight so much of the switch and because it is a great way to like showcase what the switch can do and and why it is more than just oh the next ds or something uh, i really like putting it right here in the middle of our list at number four we have graceful explosion machine my personal favorite indie title available for Nintendo Switch. I feel like this one strikes a great balance uh, of addictive, replayable gameplay and really nice quality graphics and presentation. Uh, I'm still in love with this game. I feel like it is the best pickup and play available, uh, and it really is a, a great fit for handheld mode. I disagree that it's the best pickup and play game. It, well, maybe if for solo, yes. I think another game in our list is better for that if you have someone with you. But yeah, that this this is one that we all played like a, like for a good amount of time. Like we had like extensive like time with it, and uh, it, it's so so good. Like the music, the the gameplay is like so perfect. Um, it's very simplistic in 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 its like visual um, like style, but like the gameplay. Although limited, there are only like what is it? Three, four powers, or, or I wish you had more. Um, but um, it's good enough, and it chasing a high score does get addictive. You want to get like the perfect run um, on each one of those like little like levels of the world, and it, it's so so good. It has very tight controls. It's exclusive to Nintendo Switch, uh, which earns it some brownie points, and. Some people have compared this title and some of the other indies to like, oh, this is just a mobile game. But really, the quality here is far superior uh, to something you would find on iPhone or Android. This one comes in at $12.99. I think that's a phenomenal price. And I think, like you mentioned, Gabe, it really is that type of title that just drives you crazy because you want to stretch yourself for that perfect run for those uh, levels where you don't even take a single hit. And it has beautiful, colorful visuals that are exploding all over uh, as you move throughout the levels. At number three, we have uh, Gabe's golden choice, Snipperclips. Yes, Snipperclips is so great. I still play this to this day, and, and I can't say that for like all of these games, obviously, but Snipperclips is still one that, that I go back to because even though I've done the puzzles, just like playing with somebody different introduces like a whole new like aspect to it because you know the the, the people that I'm playing with recently with a person, it's one person, um, you know they they don't play video games as much as I do, so so they're not as like inclined. Uh, to like knowing like th- being used to controls and uh, the way it controls and everything, but just seeing someone like learn and adapt and like understand what it is, and then maybe have them like even though I know the solution, I'll wait till they come up with the solution to some of these puzzles, and and, and it's so so cool. Uh, like this is like the most social game uh, on the list in my opinion. Uh, I I have played it with strangers. I really have. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it, it's amazing. I love Snipper Clips. I think it's like one of my like it's gonna be one of my favorite games on the console. Period. I don't see how anything tops it. Yeah, it, it's an exclusive. Uh, it does utilize the the, the Joy Cons in in multiplayer. Um, it's only twenty dollars, and it's a really great package. I love how complex some of those later levels get. They really force you to think, uh, and like you said, utilize cooperation in unique ways. I do wish that some of the party modes uh, were a little bit more enjoyable, and maybe that would have. Uh, 
flipped it to number two, but still, Snipper Clips is an excellent title for the Nintendo Switch. Like Gabe mentioned, it's a great one to introduce to others. Uh, if they don't seem like a one-two Switch uh, fan and they don't want to be milking cows or, or doing uh, runway dances, then maybe Snipper Clips is the way to go, and it definitely is a great one. At number two, we have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now, I was pushing for this to take the top slot, but its port nature is what keeps it at number two. Uh, it's a phenomenal package. It may be the most pristine package available on Switch, and the fact that there's something higher uh, just speaks volumes about that game. But Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is awesome. It's a great fit for Switch. It is a probably the perfect Mario Kart and the best Mario Kart and I cannot get enough of it, even though I did play on Wii U, even though uh, I did get so much time through the, the DLC there, I still love racing in this one on Switch. This is another one that I still play a ton. I played it just last night. I played mm -hmm. it the day before. Like, it, it, Mario Kart it is a classic franchise that a lot of people know, even people that aren't, like, hardcore gamers. So, like, it, it's it's fun to just sit there and, and like, play. Um, I, I'm... I have a pro controller, so I use a pro controller. A friend of mine uses a, the, the Joy-Con. Sometimes we do the split Joy-Con just, just so I can like use them like that because I don't get to use the Joy-Con individually a whole lot. Um, yeah, the, this and Simber Clips, you can make an argument for Mario Kart 8 at the number one. I, I, I understand that, but like I said, it's a port. It's been on another yeah. console, but it is now the top selling Mario Kart 8 uh, of all time. So, you know, there's definitely something to be said about that. Yeah, and it does, again, utilize the different control forms of the Switch. It's fun to play handheld. It's fun to play pro. It's fun to play. Uh, even with the Joy-Con, you throw one of the straps on there, and I still feel like it works in that way. Um, we have had some issues with the online, but currently, uh, given that online is free, I still think those tournaments and the new battle modes uh, are a whole lot of fun. We had some crazy moments that we captured uh, in videos earlier this year, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, it just feels like a near-perfect game. I don't know how they could have really improved upon the execution obviously it would be great if they had more tracks or more dlc and, and who knows what they do with a mario kart 9 but to me mario kart 8 deluxe despite being a port is is just such a no-brainer for anyone that owns a nintendo switch and at the number one spot surprise surprise it is the legend of zelda breath of the wild the game that sold the system the game that, that sold may more eventually... than the system <laughs> yeah, sold more than the system. The game that eventually uh, may be sort of the the supreme uh, title for the franchise. This one is just out of this world. I mean, and it's weird, right? Because some people say, oh, the Switch is just a, a Zelda machine. Man, it's a great machine. Um, you know, we, we've mentioned uh, nine other games that, that are all, all great in their, own, in their own respect. But, man, Breath of the Wild, uh, for, for, for a game... A Zelda game to come back, um, like to like the truest form of Zelda uh, exploration. It, it borrowed a lot from from like the first Zelda, as you know we were told over and over in interviews. Um, and they modernized it so well. Nintendo doesn't do open world games very often, and they almost perfected it here. Um, climbing the towers, getting the shrines, uh, the divine beasts, like, and the ability to just go anywhere, discover all types of things. Oh, you can't go in that direction because it's too hot. Go figure it out. Uh, like, and yeah, there, there's hints along the way, but the openness of it, 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 it's, it's really refreshing to see Nintendo adopt like a modern genre and put it into Zelda like this. Absolutely. And they found a way to, to bring that magic of, of, gaming that they were really uh, proficient at in the early years, like you mentioned, sort of the original Legend of Zelda and the exploration and the you know having to figure things out on your own and not being told and not having your hand held. And they brought it into 2017 and made it so good uh, and, and make so much sense that everyone loved it. I, I don't know anyone that didn't like this. And while it doesn't use every single uh, feature of the Switch in the same ways as something like uh, a Snipper Clips or in the same ways as like One Two Switch, it does really take advantage of the gyro, of the HD rumble, and especially of that portability. Being able to bring a big, bold, massive Zelda adventure with you on the go was the first sign that the Switch was going to be a stellar system, and I still will never forget uh, my first flight with the Switch, playing Breath of the Wild, throwing it up uh, in tabletop mode, sitting there and just kicking back and enjoying some shrines, going through and collecting new armor sets. It really is sort of like the the all game, right? It encompasses so much of Nintendo's design and so much of Nintendo's 
just awesomeness throughout the years in one crazy open world. And I feel like it did bring a lot of new players to the Zelda franchise as well. Um, and, and that, to me, uh, is even more of a sign that this is such a special game. Absolutely. And if you own a Switch, you probably already own Zelda Breath of the Wild. But if you don't, or if you're getting a Switch in the future, this is absolutely uh, a day one. You need to have it. You need to experience it. Really unlike anything else out there type of game. Uh, And we know we'll be seeing plenty of Link later this year in DLC and later this year on Game of the Year lists. There you have it, our friends. That is our top 10 best Switch games so far, three months in addition. I'm sure we will come back to this list uh, and see what switches out uh, by the end of the year. Hopefully, we'll have some games that uh, overtake a few of these. It would be great to see uh, a lot of really cool indies and some, some stellar retail releases as we move to the second half of 2017 as well. But let us know in the comments down below which one of these is your favorite or if there are any that you really are fighting for that you think should be on this list. I know Gabe was pulling for fast rmx to be here uh, but that was kind of a sacrificial lamb in order to cover a, a wider variety of genres and a wider variety of games but there are plenty of switch games like mr shifty uh, out there that are still uh, appealing to a lot of players so let us know your favorites or let us know if you think this list is just spot on either way thank you so much for watching it's been a phenomenal three months i think we can say gabe uh, that we have had an absolute blast with the switch and with the community uh, in the last 90 days Yes, and here's to 90 more years of the Switch. No, I'm joking. 90 more years? <laughs> no, I'm jo- yeah, <laughs> that'd be crazy, yeah. huh? <laughs> and and I'm, I'm proud of myself that I remembered that it's not a three-month anniversary because anniversary inherently means a year. Yeah. Almost called it a three-month anniversary. Yeah, Almost I had, called to, it a I had to stop you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, it, it, it's just three months, but it's been a, a glorious three months, and I think the next six are going to be even better. We look forward to ARMS, Splatoon 2, Fire Emblem Warriors, Super Mario Odyssey, Xenoblade 2, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, indie titles galore, and whatever else they have up their sleeve. Until that time, everybody, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from the Switch for 6 months, for 12 months, for 24 months. We will be there. Until that time, everybody, thanks again for myself and Gabe. Switch Force out.